got something that uh, Brother Lonnie shared with me the other day. Uh, just a really cool dream that he had. And, well, I thought it was cool, but we don't know the full meaning of it yet. But just wanted to share this with you. I want him to share it with you. So I'm going to cut him loose on that for a second. We're just going to put it in this, uh, this video for this week uh, along with our regular service. So here he is. Yeah, all right. Good morning. Praise God. Yeah, just... Uh, I have a lot of dreams sometimes and, and visions and just want to share this that I don't even really know what it all meant, but it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, me and my wife and my brother and his wife and there were some other folks, I don't even know who they were. We were around the downtown area, Waco, and uh, we were down there for fireworks or something and I'm not, not sure what the event was. Now this is all in a dream. And I looked up and I seen just several tornadoes. I mean, they were just everywhere and they were coming at us. And, and I was telling everybody, we've got to get out of here. Well, I just began to pray in the spirit and just, and just cry out and, and curse those tornadoes. And, and we got, I just done that. It seemed like forever. And then the next thing I know, we're back out here, and it wasn't at our place. We was in Axtell somewhere on the land, but it didn't seem like it was our land. And we was out at the back where they had maybe cattle and, and different farm animals and stuff. And, and I looked up, and there's the tornadoes again. So I began to just speak in the spirit and, and just, you know, just pray and pray because it was, they were so many of them, they was, there was no way to outrun them. And... I looked up in the sky and I guess the most amazing thing they were they weren't uh, they weren't scary looking uh, they were they had big pretty wings uh, they uh, they looked like kind of like a helicopter but they was uh, some kind of being but they were beautiful and out of the sky I started coming my grandgirls riding Which I one? call them angels uh, Jasmine and Brooklyn and little Gracie Goo and Glory Bell. They were riding on these. They were things. riding these, yeah, and they were riding and they'd come down one at a time. And Jasmine was the first one and she says, Lonnie Bear, it's nothing like you would think. It's not even like you uh, would imagine. She said, It's so beautiful. And she said, I just, you just need to see it. And then Brooklyn come down and the sweetest thing, she, they would come down just like a helicopter was landing and they'd let them down and they would get off of it. And Brooklyn come up to me and she started loving me and hugging me and kissing my face. And and, uh, and she says, Lonnie Bear, I love you so much. And I thank you that you told me about Jesus. I thank you that you shared God's word with me. And Lonnie Bear is so real. Heaven's so real. She's gone. She gets on her riding angel, thing. angel and she's gone. <laughs> and here comes Glory Bell. And Glory Bell gets, she's just, you know, she's such a cheerful baby anyway. Yeah. And she says, Lonnie Bear, they got all kinds of candy there. <laughs> They've got, Lonnie Bear, they got candy everywhere. And she said, Lonnie, you just got to see, you got to come on and go with me. And she said, come on and go with me. And I said, well, baby, I can't go with you. And she got on her flying angel and she flew off and here come my little goo. And goose, you can't even see her. She's on this big old, beautiful, beautiful flying creature. And she comes down and she don't say anything. Well, she don't she say. She, she, look? she got down. I don't even know how she got slipped down. Or she's kind of slid down. She just her face was glowing like a. Uh -huh. You ever seen if you walked in front of somebody and there was a light on their face? Yeah. And she ran up and grabbed me by around the bottom of my legs. And all uh -huh. she done was hug me and then went and got on her little flying deal and she was gone. Of course she don't. She's not a. Uh, she don't. If she climbs any laps, she ain't gonna stay there very long. <laughs> uh, but for me. Because I worry about them so much. The only thing that I know that God was showing me is that 
He has them babies. Yes. And I want to tell the whole world that when we put our trust in him, he has our children and our children's children. And we need to give them over to God. Amen. We need in the fullness say, God, they belong to you. They're yours because God is an all, all supernatural God and he has control of people. And he showed me through that the biggest thing that I could see is Lonnie, you keep praying for them babies. Yes. You keep praying and doing what you're doing. You stand in the gap for them. Even when they don't understand or their parents may not understand, me and my wife are going to stand in the gap for them and we're going to continue to pray. But I know my God's got them. Because yes, he showed me through that dream. And let me tell you something. When them flying angels come out of there with my grandbabies, the tornadoes disappeared. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, uh, I think those uh, tornadoes might have represented the darkness trying to take over our kids. But God said, not today. I want to I wanna share this. And uh, she may get mad at me, but that's okay. Uh, my little Brooklyn was down here at uh, Christmas. And, uh, you know, kids go through things. I I'm just going to say that. Uh, in the environment they're in today and in the social media world and in the, everything that they face, we got to hold them up. We got to go to war for these babies, these teenage girls and boys. Let me tell you something. The things they fight, the world that they live in, it's not like when I grew up. And But that baby come to me and she had a vision. And she didn't share this with nobody else. I don't know why she chose to share it with me, but she did. Riding down the road, right right before she left, I was taking her to work. Uh, her mom and Ray were going to pick her up. And she says, Lana Bear, can I tell you something? I said, yeah, baby, what? She said, well, I, I didn't, this wasn't a dream. This is something I seen. I was awake when it happened. And I said, yeah, baby, you can tell me. And, uh. I'm trying to remember exactly everything, how she said it. But anyway, she's seen heaven. And she said, before she got there, there was blinking lights, like, and it would be people. And she said her, her stepdad was one of them, uh, Ray Bernal. And uh, she said, no, I'm better. Anyway, she said there's, there's just blinking lights, and the closer she'd get to them, you know, she's seen Ray. She said, Lonnie Bear, what do you think that means? I said, baby, I really don't know. I mean, Did I, she I see one of the other girls, too? Or a cat or something? A cat, a cat that uh, that Billy's, of uh, Billy's that had died, I believe. Yeah, Billy Honeyke. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you how real this is. Brooklyn wasn't that close to my mother. My mother died a couple of years ago. But Brooklyn was explaining to me how colorful and beautiful some of the places were in heaven. And she says, Lion Bear, I want to tell you, I seen Renny. All the kids called my mama Renny. She said, I never seen her that happy, Lonnie Bear. Aww. So let me tell you something. Heaven's real. Yes. God's real. If you don't know him today, Ooh, glory. If you don't know him today, <laughs> You need to reach out because when a oh god when a 15 year old girl <laughs> has seen the light of heaven and she's seen my mother and she wasn't even that close to my mother and she said she'd never seen her so happy it's time people god are showing young people visions yes. and older people dreams and it's time to get on our face before our almighty God and say, Lord, I know you're real. Lord, I don't know how to do this thing. But, Lord, I'm going to put my trust in you today. Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. He is revealing himself. Yes. All the prayers that have gone up for our loved ones, our friends. He is, and that's been, that has been one of my specific prayers. Father, reveal yourself to, the, to them. Yes. And however you know that they can receive and respond. And he knows that. I don't yes. know that, but he does. And it just, it's so awesome. 
Does it mean that those people are going to walk through life and never have another trouble? No, no it doesn't, doesn't mean that. But God's revealing himself to them in a way that they can grab hold of him. I believe that. Thank you, Lord, so much for that. Hallelujah. I believe in my spirit. Oh, that's just too much for me. That, that <laughs> because I've been so worried about my Brooklyn, that God had her come Hallelujah. to me and tell me that to work, to encourage me. Weezy, to give me encouragement that don't stop praying, people, for your children and your grandbabies. And let me tell you something. We live in a in a lost and dying world. And if you don't think it is, you've got problems. And we need to all fall on our face before God and say, Lord, help us, Lord God. And, and learn to do things His way. Yes. And, and sometimes whatever dreams I may have, I don't have all the answers, people, but I know how real God is because He shows me so many things. And uh, just proof in the pudding a lot of times to to oh, let me know you. I'm there. Thank you, Lord. We love him this and he's morning. He's hearing us. He's hearing he hears prayers. your prayers. And he's faithful. Don't quit praying. He's faithful to don't quit, him. don't quit praying. Don't Hallelujah. quit praying. So I'm just gonna close out with this and say, make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life. All you have to do is say, Lord, I believe that you died on Calvary's cross. Lord, I ask you into my life, into my heart today. Yes, and I, Lord, I want to give you full control of everything, Lord God. I want to I want to take it out of my hands. And I want to place it in you, Lord yes, God. Father, and I want God, you to lead God. me, guide me, and show me and teach me how to live for you, Lord God. And teach Thank me how to be the way I need to be. And I believe you've done that. And you believe that the Father raised him on the third day. That you're saved right now. (laughs) And that's all it takes. Don't wait till you don't smoke a cigarette no more. Or don't do whatever your uh, habits may be. Don't wait. Just receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And start somewhere. Yep. That's it. In Jesus' mighty name this morning. Thank you. Hey guys, I just wanted to add something. You know, that dream that Brother Lonnie shared... I don't think, I don't think that it's just seclusive to those grandchildren. I think it, those, him seeing those girls in that dream represents our family. I think it just represents all the grandkids, our kids. So, you know, I don't want anybody to see it and say, well, that's just about them. Well, no, I think it's just a representation um, of all of our family. I just want to put that in there. That's what I truly believe. Okay. Be back in a second. Lord, hallelujah. Good morning to everybody that's going to see this whenever you see it. Tonight, tomorrow, whenever you tune in. Brother Lonnie, you want to open some prayer? I do. I do. If you bow your heads, Father God, we just thank you for another opportunity to come into your house, Father God, and give you the honor, glory, and praise and thanksgiving this morning. We love you, and we just want to magnify your holy name today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
is the same. Come on and praise Him for what the Lord has done. Amen. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what He stole from me. I took back what He stole from me. I took back what He stole from me. I, from me. I went to the enemy's camp. furniture around now, whatever you need to do over there. <laughs> Guys, we have guests this morning. We're so honored. Yes. We're very honored. We've never had guests. It's our first time, so we're excited <laughs> to see what the Lord's going to do. Hallelujah. What you got going on over there, Bill Swanee? Hi, let me know. 
Lover of my soul 
to go my Savior my closest friend I will worship you Hislop says or nobody else but it's what he said and he sent us that through prophecy a lot of people don't understand the Bible they don't understand what the word says but through all of these prophets through all of these apostles he sent us the word for a roadmap for us not to condemn us not to beat us up but that we would have guidance in our life here on earth because we all face stuff we're all going to go through things but it's how we go through them and who we go through them with and that's what we're going to learn this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sit out here with y'all. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. Y'all too warm? You need me to turn that heater down? Okay. Jane Keith, he's a little old, but thin blooded, so you might want to <laughs> face that heater. You might want to face that heater. Mommy, don't be assaulted yet. Don't be assaulted yet. I'm going to take you my shower. <laughs> <laughs> So I had a I had a little different direction on my on my mind, but that just goes to show you we don't go about what we think and and I got up at about 4 o'clock yesterday morning. And the Holy Ghost said, now let's do this. So this is what we're going to talk about and teach on this morning. And, uh, so do you all have a Bible? There's a couple of Bibles there beside you. One is a New King James. and one. Do you all have your phone with you? Uh, do you all have Bible apps on your phone? No. I'm going to get Miss Weezy to show you. Let me tell you something. I love it. I got the uh, just the Bible, the version Bible app on my phone. You can go to it fast. That's what I'm going to be using as the iPad this morning because it's fast. And you can read several different translations from the uh, King James, New King James, New Living Translation, the message, the Amplified. The, they got so many. And if you're if you're like me in, in some areas, you're a little illiterate. I'm not illiterate, but I'm saying you don't understand certain words. You can go to a different translation and read it. And boy, it just I love the NLT because it talks just like we're talking. I mean, it throws it, the words it uses just like the language we use today. Uh, so it ain't about all about the these and thous and all that, because a lot of people don't understand that. But so we're just going to lay it out there plain this morning. And y'all don't laugh. At all you don't have to follow, or you can, anyway you want to go. Uh, that black one is the NLT. The black one is the NLT, and I'll be out of the NLT most of the time. I think there's one scripture that's going to be the. Something else. Okay, so what we're gonna, what I want to talk about this morning. Now, I'm talking, I'm, I'm speaking to the Christian church this morning. I'm speaking to the people that, that say that they've received Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. And the question that I have this morning, not that I have, but the Lord is asking us, are we walking in his foot? Are we denying him? Or are we being his light? And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. So we're going to start out in Mark 8, 38, 34 through 38 in the NLT. 
and I'm just going to read it. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, the 38th chapter, starting in verse 34. <clears throat> now my, come on, don't tell me my stuff ain't going to pick up out of here. 34. Okay, Mark. <clears throat> Mark chapter 8. <laughs> That's funny because I wrote something in my Bible on the top of uh, that. I wrote, this is not for wimps. <laughs> Okay, so now here's what it says in the New Living Translation. In Mark 8, starting at, uh, at chapter 38, starting at verse 34, it says, Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. Now let's stop right there. We'll say that you've received Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, and you don't even understand what that means to, to hang on to your life. It means hanging on to every part of your flesh that you think you, you know, there are certain things we can do in this world that aren't sin. You know, we can go out and have fun. Uh, Danny Keith was sharing with me the other day. He said, man, I just feel like I'd be, uh, couldn't have no fun. Uh, we have got to, when we give our life over to Christ, and we say, be Lord. Lord means we need to give him control. See, if, if I would have never come to the place that I give him control of my life, my life would have never changed. For Now, I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not going down that road. I'm not anybody's judge. I, I believe that you're saved. But if you want to fully surrender your life and say that Jesus Christ, you're, I make you Lord and Savior of my life, then you have to say, here's my junk. Here, Lord, I need you to show me. I need you to take this away from me. You know, I'll tell you what I told him years ago. I said, Lord, I can't quit doing that. I've done this too long. I can't quit drinking. I've drank Budweiser beer since I was 14 years old, every day. I said, Lord, I can't do it. He said, I didn't ask you if you could ask if you'd trust me. So we got to begin to put not trust in Dana or Shelly or Weezy or Lonnie, but i got to say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. And we let him start working on us. Now, is it, easy? it was easy for me because he took the desires away from me. And I guess he knew that he had to because, you know, that's just the only way it was going to work for me. And what I'm saying this morning is to totally, when he says, don't follow our ways, follow his ways, he means to give our life completely. You guys... You have to give your relationship, your finances, everything that you are, you've got to give it over to him. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to say this. For four years after I surrendered my, I didn't surrender my complete life. I was delivered from drugs and alcohol, but I was still playing music in the beer joints and wherever else. And because I didn't, I'm going to tell you something, I didn't know nothing else. But what I will say this morning, after about three and a half years, I was playing a New Year's Eve night at Tokyo Store, and the first line out of an Earl Thomas Connolly song, the conviction hit me that I wasn't going to do that anymore. I called the next day and canceled all my bookings for a year and a half, and I ain't played in one of them places since, and I don't sing that music. Now, I'm not saying they ain't good clean country songs or rock and roll or blues. I love the blues. But what I am saying is, if it ain't glorifying God, I ain't doing it. That's surrendering myself to him. But it took me nearly four years. And hard-headedness. And you know what I told him one time? I said, Lord, I said, this is part of my living. This is how I make part of my income. And he said, well, if the devil can give you that money, how much more do you think I can give you? <laughs> now, I'm being real. And I said, wow. I mean, think about it. Just think about it. If I trusted, I was trusting because, see, I was on the devil's territory. All them places that caused me, when I started playing at 15 years old in the beer joints, I didn't do drugs. I wasn't, I didn't uh, drink beer and beat up everybody in the, in the place I started out. It's fun. But guess what? The devil got a hold of me. And the next thing I know, 30 years later, I'm a mess. Not only am I a mess, I'm such a mess. I don't see no way out. So that's why he says, give it all to him. 
Then he goes on to say, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, that's for his word, his gospel, people to be saved, your life will be saved. And what do you benefit if you gain this whole world and lose your soul? If you go out here and make all the money and you got the nicest home, the nicest truck or motorcycle or whatever it may be, the biggest boat, whatever it is, but you don't give your life to Jesus Christ, what have you gained? Because one day you're going to take your last breath on this earth. And none of us know when that's going to be. Mine might be today and it might be 40 years from now. I don't know. But one day we'll take our last breath. What is it to gain the whole world but lose your soul? See, the world, that's where they're lost in, material things. God, God's promises in all of his word, he's going to give us all of that. He's going to prosper us. He'll prosper us more. That's how he'll say, I have Christians ask me every day, well, how come this guy has all this and he's the devil himself? And I said, well, I can't answer you that, but what you need to do is not worry about because the Bible says don't covet don't worry about what he has. God will give you everything you ask for and everything you desire in your heart. And I promise you that he will do that. If that, it's his will for us to prosper as our soul, in our physical, in our soul, in our whole being. So you can have these things. But if you have these things and you have not him, guess what's going to happen? Destruction. So all that life here, you know what I look back, and I just want to say this. I look back at my life. And up until about nearly 17 years ago, everything I'd done was a piece of crap. I worked hard. I made more money than you can spend. Well, I don't guess because I spent it. Uh, I'd done all that, but it was all in vain. For what reason? Because it wasn't for God. I wasn't, I wasn't out here doing things that he wanted me to do. I was doing what I wanted to do. Hmm. And so I had to see how selfish I was in it. And nothing... I mean, I looked back over a period of time and I thought, how in the world did I get where I was at? How did I get from that little boy at 12 years old being filled with the Holy Ghost at an old-fashioned altar in South Waco, Texas on 28th and Gurley? How did I get from that to being so bound and wrapped in chains and just tore down like I was? How did I get from that boy, knew who Jesus Christ was at 12 years old, to where I was in my middle of my life. How did I get there? Because I, I opened every door that could be opened to the devil. I believed in Jesus. I loved the Lord. But I did not lay down my ways and follow him. I had done everything my way. Look where it got me. Thank you. Where's it ever led us? If what we do, what we choose. See, God, one thing about him, he loves us, and he don't care where we're at, he loves us the same. He gives us a choice. If we want to go out and live in destruction, he ain't going to stop it. People say, well, why didn't he stop this? That's not who God is. That's it. He gives us the choice. He wants us to, he's asking here for you to be his hands and feet. He said to take the good news, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ into the whole world. He wants us, he don't want us to go, you know, if I'm sitting in a beer joint, I'll just tell you, I love the old beer joints back when, until the destruction hit my life, until I seen the fullness of it. I went to them, I was probably the world's guiltiest about being in one. But I'll tell you something, nothing good ever come out of that. Nothing good ever come out of that. Because I set myself up uh, for death many times in getting in gun fights and knife fights. And, and I, I look back sometimes and I say, God, Why'd you even spare me? Why did you even, you know why he spared me? Because he knew I'd go to them streets and love on that old man that had pee all over his britches. Mm -hmm. He knew I'd do that because that's who I am. But I got, I was lost. I got to move on because I got some more scripture. All right, then he goes on to say, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Uh, I want you to implant that in your mind and that's uh, Mark 8. 36. That's that's a key. That's a key scripture to remember. If you've got a Bible at home or if you don't have one, we'll get you one. Highlight that. I believe in, in just remember or just put it in here. It says take this word and hide it in our heart. And the reason it tells us that is it's for our benefit, because you're gonna need it. You're gonna get in some places in your life that word's gonna be what you're 
that's going to be your Savior. Mm -hmm. That's why he gave it to us. And 37, is anything worth more than your soul? Is anything worth more mm -hmm. than your soul? <clears throat> If anyone is ashamed of me, now here's the deny. That was the topic. My topic today was, are we denying Jesus or are we being his life? It says right here, is anything worth more than your soul? Is If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in this adulterous and sinful day, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in glory of his Father with the Holy Angel. That's pretty tough. And what he's saying right there is so many Christians don't know how to be bold. Now, I'm not talking about you running up and down the street hollering, Jesus. I'm not talking about I'm talking about But share. I might do that. But, and it's okay because I do it sometimes. But what I'm saying is share. Don't be ashamed to share with your daughter, to share with your boys. I'm telling you, I told you the other day, them boys, they're your responsibility to tell them who Jesus Christ is. That's where I failed as a daddy. I'll just tell you, uh, I, I didn't go to church with my kids. I was raised in church, but I failed as a dad. Now I let them, they get on the church bus and go to church sometimes, but I failed as a dad because I lived a sinful life. And from now, now for the last several years, they know I'm a man of God. But I failed as a dad because there's a couple of them boys that, and girl, my firstborn was a was a girl. She's in prison right now. And I believe, and a lot of that wasn't my fault, but let me just tell you, I believe if I would have been able to be a part of her life and share Jesus Christ, I didn't need to be a part of her life, probably the sinful life I was living. And I got to look back at those things. But that's where I failed. But guess what? Now, I don't look to yesterday. I look at who I am now and what can I do in my grandbaby's lives and my kids' lives. But it's our responsibility to let them know who Christ is. So we're going to go now to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. It's way back down the way. 2 Timothy 1. Timothy always hides from me. That's why I like this thing. It does it for you. Well, I'm <laughs> Well, listen to this. This is some. This is some good stuff here. Are y'all there yet? Y'all, y'all there? We got Second Timothy. <laughs> okay, I'm, I found Chapter him. one, verse eight. It says, "So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord." Now, this is the NLT. It just breaks it down in our language. Never be ashamed, and it's highlighted here on, on my iPad. To be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. That that comes in the part about denying. Are we telling our friend? Are we ashamed of being a Christian? And we're, we're so scared to tell somebody because we're afraid, and, and, and that is that we're afraid that they're going to look at our life and say, well, you do this and you do that. How are you a Christian? You know, we got to get our place itself set up to where they see the light of Jesus in us. They see the love and compassion in our heart. we got to get ourselves in a place to where we can be a light to the world. We be, If we can't start, I'm going to just tell you this right now. The Lord showed me many years ago, if you can't start with your family, and your closest friends, you'll never reach anybody else. You'll never reach anybody else. If you can't, if you can't have the boldness to say, I'm a child of God, and and I can't tell my son come down here and visited me. Uh thank was it Thanksgiving? Yeah. Thanksgiving. Got to spend a week with him. A new grandbaby. And we sat out in his old office and we played music and he gave his life back to the Lord. And I told him, I said, Son, I know it's hard. You ain't telling, I, I'm no stranger to it. I said, I know it's hard, but I said, if you'll start living, I even, even from the financial end of it, uh, I, I taught him some things, because I don't see him. I might not see him for another five years. Lives in Georgia. Uh, and fixed to move to Florida. And so I share all this with him to where he can have the success that God's given me. You know, because it all comes from this knowledge and wisdom from what he's left us, a roadmap of guidance, uh, I fail. I'll be honest with you. But when I fall down, now I don't go do drugs, and I don't cuss, but I almost did the other day with Bruce. I'm gonna beat him up. But, <laughs> but and no, you laugh. You laugh. That ain't who I am anymore. That old man's been gone for years. And I had to, you asked him. I, I got outside, didn't I? But I let him know you gotta stop. 
But I didn't want to be mean to him. I don't have a desire to be that. That old man, I don't want to be that old. I don't want people to see an angry Lonnie. I want them to see a Lonnie full of love because the angry Lonnie, they're not going to be saved by seeing the angry Lonnie. They're going to be, my God, yeah, we thought you see how we knew he hadn't changed because that's how the world is. You know, if they hung Jesus on the cross, what are they going to do to Lonnie Hessel? <laughs> Come on now. You know, if they hung the miracle worker on the cross, <laughs> they did not. And see, you know, they he had thousands upon thousands. Think about it. Just put, You ever just sit back in your meditation time and put yourself in those days, what it might be? We always say, well, it's harder today than it was then. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> put yourself where he was. And what he, he walked this earth as a fleshly man. He was all human. Even though he was all God, he, he was still all. To walk. He laid all that to walk in the flesh to endure what you and I endure. So we can't say, well, he didn't, he didn't. Yeah, he did too. From the lust of women to everything, every kind of thing you can imagine, he overcome it. Sorrow, grief. Yeah, the sorrow, the grief. He said, it's okay because guess what? I've overcome the world. He overcome the world so you and I could be saved because, you know, he knew we couldn't do it. He knew we couldn't do it. So my teaching today is let's don't deny him. Let's jump out there. Even if you don't think, even if you think, man, I don't know what they're going to think about. I don't care. Because they're going to think anyway. They're going to think what they're going to think anyway. You're going to have people. you got nice airs anywhere you go. You're going to have people from your, I'll just tell you this. And I told Danny Q, though, I said, I love all my old friends. Still love them. I pray for them. I'll go meet them where they're at. And, but I don't hang out with them no more. The ones that are still drugging and doping and drinking and doing all that, I don't hang out with them because that's not who I am anymore. Uh, now, I'll go help them. I'll meet them somewhere. I'll love on them. I'll, whatever it takes, I'll do that. But I don't want You have to set yourself apart from what causes you to fail. Yes. Uh, and that's, boy, we can sit down and spend days on talking about that. Whatever your click is, <clears throat> you got to set yourself apart from that. Giving your life to Christ is the first step. The main step is saying, okay, I told Weezy this morning, I said, I don't want anybody. I, we seen a man yesterday I've known for years, and he sticks his nose up in the air at me, and, and he's been going to this church over there we went to yesterday for years, and I said, Weezy, I hope God knocks my nose plumb off of me if I ever act like that. You know, that you'll never, ever win any, a soul for the kingdom of God by acting like that. But that's why these people aren't going in these church houses that are on the streets or in the beer joints. They feel like they have a, I'll just be speaking like this, they feel like in that old beer joint they have a family or them people care. But let me tell you this, most of the time when they're going to get stuff, they ain't there. When I fell on my hardest time, all them guys that I bought uh, eight balls of cocaine for and shared with them, and that, they weren't there for me when I needed them. I named me a long list of them. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> You know, but you know why? God showed me they need me just like you did when you was in your crap. Who are you? So I'm not going to deny him. I'm going to be his light everywhere I go. If I'm on a job, I was on a job. I guess one of my best experiences, I was up on a ladder changing a ceiling fan. And this little little girl, probably in her mid-30s, uh, I've done a lot of remodeling the garage. I've done a lot of stuff over there, and I'm finishing up and, now, I ain't spoke about the Lord to this lady. I ain't done nothing. I'm on this ladder, and she says, Lonnie, can I ask you something? I said, yeah, what's up? She says, you believe in healing? I said, yes, ma'am, I do. She says, uh, well, how do I get it? I said, do you believe you can be healed? And she commenced to tell me what her situation was. She was having to take so many pain pills because of the pain in her back and her spine and her lower back. And uh, I said, the, the Word of God teaches, and I, I told her, I said, the Word of God teaches us, and I just showed you, she said, well, I know what it says. It don't say that you can or you might be healed. It says we are healed. I got down off that ladder right there, and I laid hands on that lady. And she began to weep to God. And I believe, and I felt a release. I believe at that moment she was healed. Now, I hadn't seen her in three or four years. I don't know if she's still walking. you got to learn to walk in your healing. But God's a big God, and he can do all that. But on my job, on my job, because of something, I don't know what she's seen. I mean, when you look at me, I don't know what you see. I don't look at myself that way except in the mirror in the morning. Uh, but that's being the light of Christ. And something most of the time, 
will be the light and not even realize. I had a lady come up to me in Walmart, a black woman, walked up to me. She says, will you pray for me? I don't know this woman. Now, this woman don't know my life or who I am. I said, yes, ma'am, I'll pray for you. What's wrong? And I laid hands on her in Walmart. And I prayed for her. That's being the light of Christ. This is about, as Christians, are we denying who Jesus is in our life? Or are we being the light? Let's don't hide, let's don't hide it. Everywhere Danny Keith goes, let me tell you something. You got a testimony that's more powerful. The word says we're saved by the blood of the Lamb. That's the blood Jesus shed at Calvary's cross by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Shelly, everywhere that you'll go, if you'll begin to share who Jesus is and what he's doing, even the little bit, the smallest little bittiest thing you can share with somebody sometimes, and it'll be strength for them. We need encouragement because in this world we live in today, and it's, hey, it's horrible. I mean, it's horrible. We don't get we don't get the the nourishment and the love we need. You two will never be able to love each other. Let me just share this like Christ will love you. But the only way you get to know that love is you draw close to him. He says, Draw out of me and I'll draw out of you. And when we begin to do that, people say, people are scared of that. I'll just tell you, your everyday Christian man or woman. They know the surface of what the word says and they know the surface. They don't truly know of God's love because it's not about religion, is it? It's about a personal relationship <clears throat> and how you get that personal relationship to where you can be as life is every day. Not one day a week at church on Sunday. Uh, every day, read some scripture. I don't care if it's one verse. This is, that book you're holding is your strength, it's your sword. It's a, uh, it's everything you'll ever need. Uh, I told Dana the other day when you asked him if he had received Christ, and he said yes. And I said, when you should receive Christ, the Holy Spirit, I call him the Holy Ghost because I'm old school, he enters us and he lives in. It's not a it, it's not a what, it's a him. He enters us. It's the Spirit of God. See, Jesus said, I must go so I can send the Comforter. You know, he was trying to, he tried to teach his disciples. You know what they done when he... When, <laughs> they went back to doing what they was doing before they ever met. And they seen all the miraculous miracles and everything. But then when he appeared again to them. It was very precious. Man, the power. But we need to know that he lives within us. He's our strength and what he'll teach you this word. I don't have, I can't, I mean, I read pretty good, but he's taught me this stuff. You know why? Because I seek him. And I seek him not only just in reading the word, but in my everyday, if you hear me mumbling out there on a the job, I'm talking to the Lord, you know. And people will say, well, you're a, you're a Bible thumper, you're for now. Yeah, well, I probably am. But you know what? My, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And it changed my life for the better. I, now, think, go ahead. I think what he was trying to say is until you can receive the love of God as, as much as you can, it's going to be hard. And, it's going to be hard to love another person the right way. Yes. Through many failed relationships before God brought us back. Let me ask you this. I still got some walls up today. Anybody in here, anybody else in here got any walls up built around me? Okay. I know who I am in God. But in my flesh, and the Bible teaches us to put that down and to crucify. But there's still walls that I have because that I mean, all the bad stuff, God tore away and they fell. But I still carry stuff that I don't need to carry. And I need to let go of. And we all do. <clears throat> and the more that we'll let that stuff fall off of us, the more we'll know of his love and be able to get closer to him. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you get to the point to where when you walk in your mirror in the morning and you're putting your stuff in your little goatee there, Mm -hmm. that thing you're putting all that and you look in that mirror and say good morning Holy Ghost and you're happy and you're I didn't used to like what I seen but you look in the mirror and you like what you see because you see his glow and you like what you see and you say good morning thank you for life today and we begin that's <coughs> that's relationship that if you two never talked to each other how close could you get to one another you wouldn't you wouldn't so really the Lord's the only one that right. loves us right 
and then he can place the right person in our life that will come very close to that. But of course, I always he always he placed nobody in my life besides Lonnie. <laughs> that was me doing that, so that's why it didn't work out. And I think he can say the same thing. But that's what I that was a big revelation to me that really only he loves us right. And I've never been loved right. I've never loved anybody right. Now, probably the closest I could say was my kids, you know, because that's that's a different kind of love than when he gives you a spouse or whatever. But, um, and I love that he loves me right, so I can trust that. And so that makes me, you know, even when I want to wring people's neck. Don't look at me when you say that. <laughs> you know, that makes me, because, because I, I, I've never experienced that kind of, love for somebody I'll, I'll, mean, I'll tell you this when we got when we got so right I can give him a got, lot of grace right I'm before saying. we got married <laughs> we were both so broke broken from the world I'll just say that and nothing, our choices. never nothing from God I've been serving God for several years we've been together April will be eight years and uh, we were both broken from relationships uh, just failure a lot of failure in that area mm. and let me tell you something when God does something he does it right and and but you've got to let him do it it's nothing that she can do or I can do I have to I never loved another woman in my life with a godly love all I knew was what the world calls love and I never had anybody treat me the way she treats me I never had the respect and I'm not downing or belittling nobody I'm just saying, and, and you know, but and I look back over my life and I think, why was that? I can't remember of one woman that was ever in my life that I asked them before we ever went out, will you serve the Lord with me? Because I was a little ahead of you. So whose fault was that? That was mine. And you know what we do? We cheat other people. Them people wasn't the ones I was intended to be with, no way. But the first thing I should have done, I should have been with the Lord. But I wasn't. When you're young, you're stupid, and you start off on a road, never intending to end up where I ended up at. You know, people don't say, hey, I'm going to get up and 30 years from now, I'm going to be on my butt. We don't say that. We don't see that. Because especially men, I don't know about women. Women are, you guys are wired totally different than we are. Uh, trying to figure one of you out is just almost a complete impossibility. I don't care how much God we got in us, but I can tell you this, when we find the right person, as I found in her, God sent her to me. I didn't go looking for her. I didn't go, I didn't find her in a honky tonk uh, like I found all the rest of them. Uh, God sent her to me and I'd been divorced on Friday and I'll just say this and I was done. I can just tell you, Lon Paul has looked and that's it. I'm done with all this crap. I wasn't no good at it. On Sunday morning, she walked in the door of that church. I was up there singing and playing. God said, that's going to be your next wife. I said, you done lost your mind. And I was driving home. I said, Lord, I don't, I don't, I'm not doing this again. I ain't good at it. He said, you ain't doing it this time. I am. And I've never been treated by a female the way she treats me. No, I've never not. had the... the re never been given the respect. You know, when you're taking advantage of all your life, it kind of hardens you up. That's where them walls, phew, here goes this one, and phew, here goes that one. And when you get one in front of you, you're in trouble. Mm. You have to, you've got to knock it down. You've got to buy, if you got to walk around it seven times a day for seven days till it falls like the walls of Jericho, you better get that thing out of your way because you will never ever be with the right person. You'll never ever Learn the love of God. You got to tear that stuff down. The walls I have now, they're kind of real short. I've, I've, I'm chopping them down. I took all the all the big ones God's knocked down and took out of my life, but I've still got some little ones that I'm working on getting off of me. And I know in an instant if I said, Lord, take them off, but I'm, I don't even know how to do that now. I'm just trying to be real because there's some hurt there and some pain. And Lord don't want me carrying it, but I still do. I'm just trying to be real because I believe if we're real with each other, it'll help us. You know, it'll help us be able to talk to each other, share things to where we can get past things. Because you can't dwell on stuff, you can't stay in stuff. We gotta move on. 
Uh, if we'll go to, uh, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. If we'll go to Matthew 26. Start at 69. Ooh, that's a lot of verses in that chapter. We'll go 69 through 75. Now, we're talking about denying Christ. This is right here where Peter denies Jesus. And let me just say something. Look here. We're talking about the people in the world when we really got down on our butts, they wasn't there. Jesus, Peter was Jesus' right hand man. Now he was rough and roguish and just, you know, you name it, and he was it. He was all he was all there. He loved the Lord and he knew he'd even called the Lord Messiah. And Jesus had already told him, You couldn't have known that unless my father told you that I was the Messiah. So this is the Peter I'm talking about. But listen here what he done. Now this is at the time where he had, he had uh, been arrested. Jesus had been arrested. He was fixing to go before, I guess, was it Pilate? One of them. Anyway, he was fixing to go before one of them. It says, Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, You were one of those with Jesus, the Galilean. And Peter said, Denied in front of everyone there. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. <laughs> now, all this, he, all the miracles he done seen Jesus Christ do, and he was his right hand man. He said, I don't know what you're talking I don't know him. <laughs> Well, that reminds you of. How, that's how our brother, hey, that wasn't, my, that wasn't my dope, that was his. <laughs> you know, what you talking about, you know? I mean, think about it. He did not right there. And he's a disciple. Jesus done handpicked him. Mm. Handpicked him. And he denied him. And then he goes on to say, but Peter denied in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about. Then he says, Later, out by the gate, another servant go and notice him and said to those standing around, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. I ain't know him. Peter, the strong guy, the one I'm talking about. Why am I reach up and slash somebody's ear off? for <laughs> Cut his ear off for Jesus. I'm talking about the strong guy. Done seen, boy, he's done. At this point, he's seen all the miracles. At this point, Jesus is fitting to go before, you know, and he's still. But see, Jesus already told him, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crow. No, Lord. No, Lord. He said, no, Lord. <laughs> what did he do? Yeah. So I'm going to stop on, on that as far as the denying part. What I'm saying is, as Christian, Jesus he was a follower of Christ. I mean, uh, Peter was a follower of Christ, but he still, we won't go into Judas. Judas carried the money. He was the treasurer. The Lord already knew what Judas was going to do. He already knew what he was going to do. And what I'm trying to teach this morning is in our everyday life, no matter what funk we're in or mess, let's don't deny him. Let's let our friends and our family, let's start with our friends and our family. It, it's some people can't just walk up to a stranger. I can. I don't like to sometimes because I don't know what I'm fixing to walk into. Uh, when I first went to the streets, we drove up an underneath 17th Street Bridge after being down off of about 7th and Clay. And I'm talking about these people with guns and knives and dope and, and everything. And I said, I'm not going to subject my wife to that because I'm by myself for one thing. And so the next time I went down there, I carried some help. <laughs> you know, so because you got to be cautious. You're walking in, you're on their ground. You know, and you just got to be cautious about what you do. So we're going to go on now, and we're going to talk about a little bit about being the light. So let's first start at John. I think it's four nine. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, four, and verse nine. Let me see if I'm right. Okay, this is where Jesus meets the woman at the well. I love her. And uh, it says on, in 9, uh, John 4, uh, 
chapter 4, verse 9, the woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. See, right there, she's saying, why would you even talk to me? Because Jews don't talk to Samaritans. He was the Messiah. He was the Christ. But what my point this morning is, let's be Jesus at the well in people's lives. Let's be Let's be able to, you know, Jesus already knew all of her faults, all the men she had been with. Jesus knew everything about her. She wasn't feeling a lie to him. He didn't care. He wanted her to have this living water. So, and he was being a light. And everywhere we go, if we have Christ in us, we should be the light. Let's go to John 8, 12. topic right here on my iPad says Jesus the light of the world it says in, it says Jesus spoke to the people once more and said I am the light of the world if you follow me you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life wow, the light that leads to life that's awesome Thank you. ain't nobody else going to give you that yes. ain't nobody else can put that glory in you it's the glory of God's what it is uh, no one else there's nothing you could ever do but receiving Christ as Lord and Savior and Him having Him and knowing He's with you. And every, you're gonna, we're going to go through stuff, Dan. Shelly, we're going to go through things. Uh, we're not unsusceptible from them. We're going to face stuff. Uh, but when we face it, we got the one that overcome the world, He says. Yes. He says, if God be for us, not, who can be against us? Come on now. They can't know parole officer. They can't know police officer. They can't know, uh, I ain't going to mention some other people's names. They can't be against us if God's for us. They can, but they ain't going to get very far. First off, when you're blood bought and you're a child of God and you have his favor, and a lot of people say, well, he don't do for me what he does for you. And I said, well, he'll do everything for you he does for me, but you got to allow him to. See, we, that's where we get to what we was talking about earlier, wanting to hang on to stuff and do everything. Instead of giving it to God, we want to keep mm -hmm. carrying the stuff around here mm -hmm. like this. Let me give you an example. I'll use Chevy if I can find something here that's really heavy. <laughs> you clean houses for a living, right? Yeah. Okay. What about that blue box? Work at Walmart some too, right? Yeah. How about that blue box? Let's just use it. This ain't very heavy. We'll pretend it is. We stand up. I want you to hold this with both hands. And just begin to walk around the room. Now you've got a table over it needs to be dusted. I want right. you to dust it without letting that go. You can't. Your hands are full. That's how we live. Right. We carry our burdens. He says, my burdens are light, give them to me. But we walk around with our baggage. Yep. We can't do our job, Dana. We can't dust the table. We, no. If I got this and my hands are full, I can, can I build a wall? Or something yeah, heavy. Or something. I usually grab something really heavy and say, now carry that around. And imagine carrying it, you know. And that, but it's just an example that we can see. Sometimes we have to see stuff. So when I face an obstacle, I have to know it's too big for me, and I give it to you. Every day, and, and I don't care how godly and how much of a relationship you have, the difference is with him, nothing's impossible. It says in uh, Philippians 4, 13, do all things in Christ who strengthen me. He ain't nothing too big. I don't care if it, there's no addiction, there's no nothing in our minds, there's no wall too big. You know, we, we allow things to, to stay on us. Because that's just our human nature. But he wants us to let it go. He wants whatever we're carrying that's, that we can't function. The first thing he wants us to do is make him Lord and Savior. 
not just receiving, but say, Lord, I'm tired of doing things my way. I want to do things your way, Lord. I know your ways work. Mine has got me, cost me my health, my life. I'm going to share something with y'all this morning. I ain't told Daniel. The devil fought me with everything he had after I received Christ back in my life and received deliverance, instant deliverance from a, a two or three eight balls of dope a day. Uh, full deliverance. No desire, nothing from it. The devil hit me with everything he had. I started having health issues. And I went to the doctor. The doctor put me through every test you can imagine. He came up with five chronic illnesses that I had. Five. He said, I ain't nothing I can do for you. So tell your family, so you may have to come here. Sent me home with 13 medications. I could have took them for two days. They made me sick. I've never been a medicine taker. I took all that stuff and throwed it in the garbage. I said, Lord, you ain't brought me this far to leave me now. I said, I know you're not. I said, if you're ready for me, I'm ready. Take me home. I said, but I'm not believing the report of the doctor. I know that you've got lives you want me to reach. I already know this in my spirit. And I said, so I'm going to stand on what your word says. By his stripes, I'm healed. And I'm not taking all this stuff. And I've never been back to the doctor for any of that. And he miraculously healed me. I get out here and work like a 20-year-old man but with the knowledge of a 55-year-old man. And I'm giving God the credit and glory. Because man said Lonnie was dead. They said I had cirrhosis of the liver, hepatitis C, uh, chronic uh, neuropathy, oh, just all just uh, a swollen spleen, uh, just you name it. I just went on and on. and you know, But I had to make a choice. Am I going to let that depress me or am I going to say God you've already said I'm healed you've already said I'm healed I got run over by an 82 wagon in 2002 run my life run my work life run my health and have emergency surgery laid up for nearly two years lost my livelihood I had to learn to trust God and know that it wasn't anything. I went through something the last few years that no man could ever get himself out of. No man could ever get himself out of, but I went to God with it now. The IRS had put a lien and seized everything that I had. $86,000 worth of IRS debt come off of me. All of it. All of it. But the government gave me $20,000. Because I trusted God. Most people will blow their head off. Just tell you. Most worldly guys. I guarantee you, your roommate right now, if he, he's already lost his job or whatever he's lost and whatever's going on in his life, but right now, you know how the devil hits us in our finances and he 
he socked us right in the gut, man. He knows he can get us there. But I let go of all that and I, I put that in God's hand. And I said, when, when you bring me out of this, Lord, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops because I could have never been back there. I knew I didn't know it. I knew I didn't know it. They opened my eyes. But because of my stupidity as a young man, for about three years, I didn't file my, when I got hurt, I didn't file my taxes. But well, they come back and say, I owe them all this money for interest for not filing those taxes. So they filed them for me with no deductions. I had three crews on the road. You know, all kind of deductions. Like I said, they owed me money. But the, my arms at the time said, you don't, the, the worst thing you can do is don't file your income tax right now. And I didn't. So, you know, how we are as men, we just, we slid that over there and under that table over there for right now. My God, He put people in my life. He put a tax attorney that we didn't even know. She called me. I was out on a job. And she said, you're going to have to get home. She said, this tax attorney I had just by myself, clock to see, never paid me anything. Didn't charge me nothing. My God, I said, God, whatever it takes, you put the right people in my life. Cause see, I done done, I done what I thought. He, I went and, and uh, hired another CPA. I had filed offer and compromises. I had done, sent all the money they said to send over a period of time. I had they sent it back to me. <sighs> my God. So let's just begin to trust Him this morning. Do you care if I pray with y'all? I'm just gonna slide my chair up. Jerry, I don't know your life. I've known this man my whole life. I'm my whole life. And I'll tell you this. We've always been friends, but we've had some other things. We've had some time to try to fit in each other. I'm not going to be mad at each other for a long time. And God brought some men back in my life for a reason. I know what the reason is. I want him to see it. I think that ain't the scene. If God can change that boy. God can change that old rough go around the edges. I believe I am saved right now. There's some things that come off of that. I don't know your life. And I don't even know your life. But God knows you this morning. He knows your heart. He knows everything that you, you're going through. I just want to.
know something that the word says crucify our flesh. That means to get up in the morning and say, say, uh, Lord, I'm going to serve you today and I'm not going to serve my flesh. I'm going to serve you today, Lord. You live, he says, you can walk in the again, you ordain your steps. Crucify that. It's a hard thing to do to crucify our flesh. It means put off Dana and put on God. Put off Shelly and put on God. You don't have to be a fanatic. You have, but once you, once you start having that kind of relationship with Him, things are just going to flow. Things are going to fall off you that you never ever would have thought would have fell off you. They're just gonna, you're going to look up one day and it's going to be gone and you're going to say, I didn't do that anymore. I didn't do that anymore. But then you say, Thank you, Father. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father God, that you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. And Lord, that, that you are in our steps from this moment on. That we're going to listen and do things your way and not our thinking and thinking the way that we think things are to be. Father God, I pray that you trust their health right now. I pray that you trust their finances and the jobs that they do. Father God, I pray that you'll teach them and show them the way, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray this time. Just receive that and soak it in. Soak it in God's goodness. God's, there's so many. Sometimes just Google God's promises and let it give you the scriptures and just go read the promises. He, the covenant He made with us. He made a covenant with us. That He'd take care of us. He says, I feed the little birds in the air. How much more do I love my children? You know how you buy your kids nice gifts and your grandbabies and stuff nice gifts? How much more does God love you? Hallelujah. The trust has to take it. No, you Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We've got to put off the old stuff that you steered and you try to hang on to. Thank you, Jesus. I laid this stuff down a long time ago. I don't Glory like it to ever come. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Give you all the glory, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've got talents and abilities, and I don't know you, Shelly, but I know there's so many things in you. You seem like a very quiet and humble person. God loves that. And if I'm not no one, it's very good. God loves humble people. Let's just begin to have control. I promise you this. Lord, to your name. Hallelujah. Sure. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise you. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Anybody I've got any Thank bad you. feelings again, Lord, forgive me. And I forgive those that's done me wrong. Lord, let me walk in your fullness today. Lord, any impurity in Thank my you, mind. Father. Hallelujah. Any impurity Hallelujah. in my heart or my body. Hallelujah. Forgive me, Lord. Thank forgive you, me my sins today. Repent truly means that don't do this stuff anymore. Turn away. Thank you, Jesus. Glory and to every you. day we do that. Yeah. That's where we start to crucify our flesh. Before you leave the house. So you need to get up about three hours early in the morning. Before you leave the house, brother, if you'll go before God just with that. That you start. I don't know Thank you, Father. Thank, 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know what works. Hallelujah. I know what works. And I know when you draw out of him, he's there. He's there anyway. But Thank you, Father. A lot of times he's the last one we want to go You know what people in our world and society today, when they have a sniffing and they run to the doctor and still say, Lord. Oh, glory to your name, Father. Let's begin to put out everything. If you if you put it. If you'll give it to God, Thank you, Jesus. it says your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Thanks, Father. Thank if you'll give all of you to the Lord, you'll see a supernatural change in such a short period of time, and you'll thank you. Thank you. Like it happened to me. But it'll all be for the better. Them boys, your daughter, yes, I So they what's up with you? Because they're going to ask. They're going to see it. But when they it. do, what are you going to tell they're them? They're going to see it. You're not going to deny it, but I see it. Before you say that, they they're going to see it. Yeah. They're going to say, hey, what's up, man? And yeah, I said, man, I'm not just changed, son. Don't be ashamed of that. He says, you deny him, you're not denying your foot. And it's easy to do. We do it at times and don't even realize it. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you what, I was 
summer job. And I stood and I said, stop at that black old chopper there on the summer in 18th Street. And I pulled up in there, and the guy, had, I didn't see him walking by the house. I thought it was a woman. He was bent over, plumped over, slumped over, and just walked by there, and I just ignored him. I stopped over to go get me. Well, they, you could go through the drive through the bed side and have the trailer, so I could. The same person passed me, and I just began to pray. And I wanted to grab him and straighten him up. Yeah, honey. Uh, because I believe that that's the power and authority of God to give me this sort of virtue. But I didn't want to scare him, and I didn't want to hurt him. So I just began to, I said, just pray for him. So I began to pray for Jesus. So I started. You know how many people pray for you? That you don't even know. That you don't even know. Thank you know, that old rough, that old rough boy that I remember that's been in jail for 30 years that called me this morning, he's not the same man anymore. He's a child of God. And he'll tell you right quick. But see, when I first started talking to him a few years back, he was that, but he was scared to share it. But he changed my head and said, Thank you, Richard, Jim Fisher. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Basically, Miracles happen. Yeah, yeah. He shot a killer. Yeah. Miracles happen. He took a man's life. I couldn't imagine him living with that myself personally. Man, I He has lived that for the rest of his life. But he still found God. He didn't find God in the way most people think. Like, when I killed somebody, I'm gonna go to hell now, God when he put something that wasn't like that. He just took all these years to get locked up. He lost his life. And we shot that boy. Not only did that boy lose his life, he lost his his family, his children, his grandparents. They lost their they lost their dad, their grandpa, their both sides of the situation. Why? Because of the devil. Thank you. The devil, he said, I come to steal, kill, and destroy that stuff you know that to hinder. I, I don't know exactly what it said, but read John to you. I think it is John 10. John 10. I'm, I'm thankful that he asked me to go out and come this morning. We've been just doing this, just us, and putting it on YouTube. And, and people are watching it and stuff, and I just pray that people be saved. But it's been a blessing to have you this morning. Yeah. It's been awesome. But, uh, you don't know how it makes me feel inside to see him and, and know that, you know, I, I didn't know a, a lot about his situations over the last several years, but when he began to share about reading the word when he was locked up, and, and, and not only did he read it, but he put it in there, because he could tell me about it, see, to be able to, because not only was he doing it, but he was testing me, and I know that, and he wasn't doing it in a bad way, but he was doing it, well, I'm going to see what this little boy really knows, and that's why God tells us, if because people got to know you the Lonnie, real deal, Lonnie has to tell a higher accountability, if I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stand up here and sing to you and preach to you and try to teach. I'm held to a higher accountability. And I told the Lord at first, I said, Lord, I know I do all this now. I barely, he said, Lord, I said, Lord, trust me. Trust me. He said, open your mouth and I'll fill it. He said, read my word. I ate my heart, open your mouth and I'll fill it. And I fill it in a way that people can understand. Be real. You know, if there was 20 people here this morning, I might not have the time to sit down and look at you guys. But there are 20 people there. So, however, God wants to bring them, I don't care. And if He brings them in packs, I love them all at the same time. You know what I'm saying? But, but I love y'all. Thank you so much for being here this morning. It, it just, it, it's, a, it's amazing to see God move. And I believe He does some things inside all of us this morning. Well, we done if y'all want to. Hey. He take a nap. Take, take <laughs> him home, let him Let's pray us out real quick yes, and then we'll turn this off. You guys stand up over here, brothers. We, I'm going to let you pray us out. Please. Okay. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you give us a place to gather. Even if it's small, Lord, it don't matter. I thank you for bringing these honored guests here, Lord God, that we can love on and minister to. And maybe that we could just that we were able to worship you freely in this, in this still free country, Lord. And as we walk out of here today, Lord God, that we have God encounters and that we'll know <laughs> that that's you, Lord, 
And I just ask you for protection and greater wisdom yes, until we meet again. And thank you for giving us an opportunity to gather around your word. We love you, Jesus. And Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory.